My name is Sam Bakhnin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. In 1939, American psychologist John Dollard and four of his colleagues put forth their famous frustration-aggression hypothesis. With minor modifications, it fits well the phenomenon of narcissistic rage. First, the narcissist is frustrated in his pursuit of narcissistic supply. For instance, he is ignored, ridiculed, doubted, or, God forbid, criticized. Second, frustration causes narcissistic injury. Third phase, the narcissist projects the bad object onto the source of his frustration. He devalues her or it, or attributes to her or it malice and other negative traits and behaviors. If she dared to criticize him, ignore him, ridicule him, or disagree with him, she is bad. And then there's a fourth phase. This causes the narcissist to rage against the perceived evil entity that had so injured and frustrated him. But narcissistic rage should not be confused with anger. Normal garden variety anger, though they have many things in common, but they are not the same. Narcissistic rage has two forms. First kind is explosive. The narcissist flares up, attacks everyone in his immediate vicinity, causes damage to objects or people, and is verbally and psychologically abusive. And there is another type of narcissistic rage, the pernicious or passive-aggressive type. The narcissist sulks, is petulant, gives the silent treatment, and is plotting how to punish the transgressor and put her in her proper place. These narcissists are vindictive and often become stalkers. They harass and haunt the objects of their frustration. They stalk, they sabotage, and damage the work and possessions of people whom they regard to be the sources of their mounting wrath. Narcissists are not an exception. Most personality disordered people are prone to be angry. The anger of people with personality disorders is always sudden, always raging, frightening, and without an apparent provocation by an outside agent. It would seem that People suffering from personality disorders are in a constant state of anger, which is effectively suppressed most of the time. It manifests itself only when the person's defenses are down, incapacitated, or adversely affected by circumstances, inner or external. We have pointed at the psychodynamic source of this permanent, bottled-up anger in other videos. In a nutshell, such patients are usually unable to express anger and direct it at forbidden targets uh, in their early formative years. For instance, they are angry at their parents, but they cannot express this anger. The anger, however, was a justified reaction to abuse and mistreatment. The patient, as a child, was therefore left to nurture a sense of profound injustice and frustrated rage. Healthy people experience rage and, and anger, but as a transitory state. This is what sets the personality disordered people apart from healthy people. The anger of, of patients with personality disorder is always acute, permanently present, often suppressed and repressed. Healthy anger has an external inducing agent, a reason. It is directed at this agent, what we call coherence. Pathological anger, on the other hand, is, not, is, is neither coherent nor externally induced. It comes from the inside, it emanates from the inside, it is diffuse. It is directed at the world, at injustice in general. The patient does identify the immediate cause of, it, of the anger. Still, upon closer scrutiny, 
the cause is likely to be found lacking, and the anger excessive, disproportionate, and incoherent. Let me elaborate the point. It might be more accurate to say that the people with personality disorders are expressing and experiencing two layers of anger simultaneously and always. The first layer, call it superficial anger, is indeed directed at an identified target, the alleged cause of the eruption. But there is a second layer, and that second layer is anger directed at the patient itself, himself. The patient is angry at himself for being unable to vent off normal anger normally. The patient feels like a miscreant, a freak. He hates himself. This second layer of anger also comprises strong and easily identifiable elements of frustration, irritation, and annoyance. While normal anger is connected to some action regarding the source of the anger, or at least to contemplating such an action, pathological anger is mostly directed at oneself, or even lacks direction altogether. People with personality disorders are afraid to show that they are angry to meaningful others because they are afraid to lose them. Take someone with borderline personality disorder. He, she's terrified of being abandoned. Take the narcissist. He needs his narcissistic supply sources. The paranoid. He is dependent on his persecutors and afraid of the persecution. So the borderline, the narcissist, the paranoid cannot express their anger because they are afraid of the consequences. These people prefer, prefer to direct their anger at people who are meaningless to them, people whose withdrawal and abandonment will not constitute a threat to their precariously balanced personalities. So, instead of shouting or erupting at mother, they yell at a waitress. Instead of standing up to the boss, they berate a taxi driver or explode at an underling. Alternatively, they sulk. They feel anhedonic, unable to enjoy, to feel pleasure. They are pathologically bored. They drink, they do drugs, engage in reckless behaviors. All these are forms of self-directed anger, self-directed aggression. <coughs> From time to time, no longer able to pretend and to suppress what's going on, these psychodynamics. These people have it out with the real source of their anger. They rage and generally behave like lunatics. They shout incoherently, make absurd accusations, distort the facts, pronounce allegations and suspicions, and are altogether a sight to behold. These episodes are followed by periods of saccharine sentimentality and excessive flattering and submissiveness towards the victim of the latest rage attack driven by the mortal fear of being abandoned or ignored, people with personality disorders debase and demean themselves to the point of provoking repulsion in the beholder. And these pendulum-like emotional swings make life with such patients very difficult and, of course, unpredictable. Again, consider the narcissist. Narcissists can be imperturbable, resilient to stress, and generally sanctuary, cold-blooded. Narcissistic rage is not a reaction to stress, it is a reaction to, perceived, to a perceived slight, an insult, criticism, or disagreement, in other words, a narcissistic injury. It is intense and disproportional to the offense, as we said. Raging narcissists usually perceive their reaction to have been triggered by an intentional provocation with a hostile purpose. Their targets, on the other hand, invariably regard the raging narcissist as incoherent, unjust, and arbitrary, not to say a not case. It is not clear whether action diminishes anger or anger is used up in action. But anger in healthy persons is diminished through action and through its expression. Anger is an aversive, unpleasant emotion. People try to avoid it. It is intended to generate action, 
in order to reduce frustration. Anger is coupled with physiological arousal precisely because of this. But the narcissist rage and anger seems to be a bottomless pit. No matter how long and how often the narcissist rages, there's more where it came from. Another enigma is, do we become angry because we say that we are angry, thus identifying the anger and capturing it, so to speak, or do we say that we are angry because we are angry to begin with? Anger is provoked by adverse treatment, deliberately or unintentionally inflicted. Such treatment must violate either prevailing conventions regarding social interactions or some, other, or some otherwise deeply ingrained sense of what is fair, what is just. The judgment of fairness or justice is a cognitive function. Narcissist is impaired this way. Anger is induced by numerous factors. It is almost a universal reaction. Any threat to one's welfare, physical, emotional, social, financial, or mental, is met with anger. Threats to one's affiliates, nearest, dearest, nation, favorite, football club, pet, whatever, such threats are met with anger. The territory of anger includes not only the angry person himself, but also his real and perceived environment and social milieu. Threats are not the only situations, of course, to incite and elicit anger. Anger is also the reaction to injustice, perceived or real, to disagreement sometimes, and to inconvenience, discomfort, caused by dysfunction. Still, all manner of angry people, narcissistic or not, suffer from a cognitive deficit, and they are worried and anxious while they are angry. They are unable to conceptualize, to design effective strategies and to execute them. They dedicate all their attention to the here and now, and they ignore the future consequences of their actions. Anger is like this. Recent events are judged by angry people as more relevant and weighted and is weighted more heavily than earlier ones. Anger, to, to summarize, impairs cognition, including the proper perception of time and space. It's an overpowering emotion. In all people, narcissists and normal, anger is associated with a suspension of empathy. Irritated people cannot empathize. Actually, counter-empathy develops in a state of aggravated anger, dis-empathy, if you wish. The faculties of judgment and risk evaluation are also altered by anger. Later provocative acts are judged to be more serious than earlier ones, just by virtue of their chronological position, which is, of course, irrational. Yet, here's, here's the distinction. Normal anger results in taking some action regarding the source of the frustration or, it, or, or whoever made you angry. And pathological rage is, as I said, mostly directed at oneself or displaced at someone who had very little to do with the anger or lacks the target altogether, is diffuse. Narcissists often vent their anger at insignificant people. I mentioned the, the unfortunate waitress, taxi driver, or underling, employee. I mentioned that narcissists sulk, give you the silent treatment, feel unhedonic, pathologically bored, and so on. And so, this narcissistic behavior indicates to us that we are not dealing with anger but with an entirely different phenomena whose outward appearance resembles anger, but whose psychodynamic inner landscape is completely different. Most narcissists are prone to be angry. Like, like, uh, like I said before, their anger is always sudden, raging, frightening, and without an apparent provocation. They're in a constant state of rage. And they effectively control it some of the time. And, but when the narcissist uh, has deficient narcissistic supply, doesn't get enough of it. When he's incapacitated, sick, 
when he's in a life crisis or adversely affected, there's bad circumstances, bad events, and so on and so forth, the rage erupts. It is the rage that controls the narcissist, not the other way around. Pathological, to, to sum up, pathological anger is neither coherent nor externally induced. It emanates from the inside. It's diffused, directed at the world, and injustice in, uh, in general. The narcissist is capable of identifying the immediate cause for his fury. But upon closer scrutiny, the cause is likely to be found strange, lacking, excessive, and the anger excessive, disproportionate, incoherent, or irrelevant. It might be more accurate to say that the narcissist is expressing these two layers of anger that I mentioned, simultaneously and always. The first layer, superficial ire, is indeed directed at an identified target, the alleged cause of the narcissist's volcanic displays. But the second layer incorporates the narcissist's biggest enemy and his wrath and narcissist's enemy is himself. There has been this famous sentence, I have seen the enemy, and it is I. And this should be every narcissist's motto. His rage is self-rage. His hatred is self-hatred. And his denial of his self-aggression is what makes him such a menace to others. He has, he has to displace this self-destructive very dangerous emotions. By torturing others, he avoids torturing himself.